Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time again for another Verbling class. Um, my name is Lisa and I am in Washington State in the United States and right now it's 3 p.m. my time that's in the Pacific time zone and if you have a reservation for this class then you can go ahead and uh, use that reservation and join us in the first two minutes and if you do not have a reservation you can get one still and if you don't have a reservation then you can wait two minutes until the green join class button comes hi there Sanem how are you hi Lisa I'm good how are you I'm doing well thank you Sanem where, where are you from I'm from Turkey oh where nice are you from? what what part of Turkey uh, it's northwest, northwest northwest part of Turkey. Okay. Where are you from? I'm from the United States. I live in Washington State. Do you? That's on the west uh, coast. Yeah. Nice. I've been to the United States like really? just like, twice. Where did you go? Yeah. Um I stayed in Florida for a year. Wow. And I was in Indiana for another six months. Uh-huh. And now I'm back in Turkey. <laughs> uh, how long ago was that? Was it recent that you were there? Uh, it was the first time was in 2009 till 2010. Okay. The second mm -hmm. time was in uh, July 2010. So it was six months later I came back to Turkey. Okay. And I stayed there six months and came back. It's been like almost two years now. Oh, yeah? I haven't been to the United States, yes. It was a great experience. Were you studying or what were you doing? No, actually, uh, I was working. I had my um, training on tourism. Oh. Mm -hmm. Training? What kind of training? Tourism, like um, hotel. Like oh. Tourism. And, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, cool. Tour oh, on tourism? Tourism yeah. training. Yeah, hotel training. Uh, like I was, I was an intern. Oh, you know? okay. In on, Florida, yeah, huh? on prison, like hotel management. Hotel yeah. management. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, welcome everybody. Yeah. Um, lots of people coming in right now, so we'll just uh, wait a minute here and see who comes in. Um, I did put the link to the document where I have the article. I will give it again in the Verbling chat and also I'll give it in the Google chat. Just make sure everybody has a chance to open it. Um, looks like people are starting to open it. Great. Okay, I think we might be full. So um, let me just explain how the Verbling classes work since we have lots of new people joining the website, checking out the website every day. Um, Verbling offers English classes and also Spanish classes and the way we do this is we have teachers um, a bunch of English teachers and more and more Spanish teachers and we uh, choose our slots and then we we create classes um, of all different types reading writing uh, vocabulary grammar speaking listening classes everything that you could do in the English language we try to do to give you lots of opportunities to use your English and improve so pretty much every day all day long there are classes going on so um, everybody had all the teachers they have a profile you can go and follow them if you want to know when their classes are we have Facebook pages you can follow us um, you can give us feedback so we have some interaction um, yeah so you just come and and you have to come in the first usually you gotta get here right on time because um, unless you have the Verbling membership which is twenty five dollars a month and that allows you to make a reservation so that you can make sure you get into the class but otherwise there's lots of people and it's just whoever hits the button first I guess gets in and unfortunately we only have nine spots open um, in the Google Hangout but the good thing about it is that um, these this is a live class. It's live 
streaming right now. Um, so and it's being recorded. So if you want to just stick around and, and listen to us read this article and go over some vocabulary and um, talk about it, then you can do that. So we can have lots more people in this type of a class. But the people who are actually here with me in the Google Hangout, they will be the ones reading and talking. Um, if you want to participate a little bit, also you can write in the Verbling chat. Um, it's nice if people, you know, you can use the chat to get to know each other a little bit and talk and you can also use it to ask questions and help each other understand things. So at the beginning of a class, usually we just go around to each of the students and you just tell us your name and what country you're from and then we will get us started. And hi there, Bali. How are you doing today? And the other thing is you got to make sure your microphone is not muted. And the way that you make sure that your microphone is not muted is you look above the Verbling chat box. I know Bobby knows how to do this, so maybe he's um, stepped away from his computer for a minute. Hi, Lisa. Um, hi there. Long time no see. Yeah. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, I'm getting some sun. Some what? Some sun. It's sunny really? here. Yeah. yeah. One of these. Oh, let's see. What do you got there? Show it to me again. Is that your hat? Oh, I need a hammock? My hammock. Yeah, I need a hammock. I know. <laughs> I have one, actually. I was thinking about yeah, going well, outside later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so Bobby, why don't you tell everybody where you're from? Well, I'm from Colombia. Nice to meet you. Everybody, I think, I don't know anybody here. Okay, well, we'll see who's here today. Yeah. Okay, it looks like uh, Mauro's here. Hi, Mauro. Mauro, I think your microphone might be muted. So click on, if it's red, that means it's muted. You just have to click. There you go. You hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Mauro, and I'm from Argentina. All right. Um, I think it's, it's the first time that I'm with you. Okay, great. It's my third or fourth time here in... Verbling. Great. Okay, well, welcome. Thank you. Uh-huh. And Nazra, how are you doing? Hello. 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 How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, finally, I'm in your class. <laughs> I know. I saw you were determined today. I saw that you were going to get in the class today. <laughs> yeah, be, because uh, always I'm chasing your class, but uh, unfortunately I, I never uh, get in your class. Well, I'm glad to have you. I'm glad you made it in today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm from Algeria, by the way. Okay. Wonderful. Um, let me just uh, mention to people... Um, if you have any background noise or something like that, then it makes it hard for people to hear sometimes. So if you get muted by me or somebody else, uh, don't take it personally. We're just hearing some noise that we want to stop. And I'm going to show you how you can monitor your microphone. So if you look above the Verbling uh, chat box, you'll see that when I'm talking and making noise, these little dots are colored green and then yellow and then red. So if you see your dots going, that means we hear some kind of sound um, by you. I, so you might get me. Okay. Teacher. Uh-huh. Yes? Yes. I think that Darth Vader is in the glass. <laughs> I, yeah, somebody's breathing. Yes. <laughs> we hear the breathing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Osman, how are you doing? Uh, I am fine. Hi, everybody. Uh, I joined uh, Turkey. Uh huh. Great. Mm. Well, that's <laughs> that's all. That's good. We're just gonna get started. Okay. I think nice. um, your microphone. I think we can hear you breathing a little bit too. So you can move your microphone away from your mouth a little bit, or just mute mute yourself when when you're not talking. Okay. Okay. And uh, Pablo, how are you doing? 
Yes, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm from Argentine, Buenos Aires. Okay. And wonderful. this is this is my first uh, class with you. Uh huh. Wow, lots of uh, new newbies, <laughs> new people yes. to the class. Great, wonderful. Yes. Well, we're going to be doing some reading. We're just going to finish the introductions first. Hi, Sergio. How are you? Is your microphone on, Sergio? Uh, it was muted. Okay. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are good. you doing? Pretty good. It's a nice sunny day, so that's always good. <laughs> oh, uh, cool. Uh, uh, my name is Sergio, uh, and my I'm from Brazil. Okay, uh, so is it? it fact, I think actually, I said it. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, actor is uh, our first time. Really? Okay. Sergio, okay, great. And Sinem's here. Did I say that right? Is it Sinem? Or? Yes, very correct. <laughs> okay, Sinem. <laughs> correct. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Well, I heard uh, you already told me, so go ahead and tell everybody else where you're from. Yeah, I'm from Turkey. Okay. Um, yeah, this is where I'm from. <laughs> Have you been uh, taking Verbling classes before, or this is new? Yeah, actually, last week uh, I found out about Verbling mm -hmm. on a Turkish news uh, oh, yeah. newspaper, uh, and then I st and I gave it a try, and uh -huh. I really liked it. Um, I spent like two and a half hours on Verbling <laughs> last week. Yeah, and during the week I, I actually had no time yeah. because of. So I just found, made t some time and got in. Great. Yeah, it's, it's a great uh, website if you're trying to learn great. English or Spanish. Sometimes it's hard for me to get off of Verbling because I teach classes and then I see what's coming up next for Spanish and I just want to watch and participate. And <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to get away from the computer. <laughs> right, yes, I have already suggested Verbling to all my friends. Oh, great. That I have on some social networks, you know. Yeah, I think we have had lots of uh, people from Turkey joining the classes recently because of the, the commercial or whatever it was, the coverage. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And hi, Yada, how are you? Relax. Of course, I'm great because I'm on <laughs> vacation. That's great. Sunday. That's great. All right. Great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I worked already this morning a bunch, but now I am also going to have a couple of days off, so that'll be nice. Well, I have classes tomorrow, verbling classes, but I own a, ca a coffee shop, a cafe, so I also work there a couple days a week, but I don't have to work there this weekend. <laughs> body. <Yes>. Okay, body. <laughs> okay, and let me get, who's from Russia? Hello? I think your microphone is. Hi. Yes. What's your name? Uh, my name is Max. I'm from Russia, but now I am in uh, the. It's a little bit hard for me to he hear you because the microphone is cutting in and out. I'm wondering if maybe if you turn the camera off, that helps the connection. I'm not sure. I heard that you're from Russia, but you're living somewhere else. Where are you living? In London? Uh, in London, yes. Okay, I see the picture there with the, the big tower, Big Ben, or whatever. <laughs> yes. Okay, Okay, great. Are you studying in London? Uh, I was in England, English is so so okay, it's still hard for me to understand. The microphone is kind of wobbly. Okay, so let's get started. Maybe the microphone will work itself out. And um, everybody, I want you to know that if you're interested in going to Colombia, where it's nice and hot and sunny, <laughs> Badi is wanting to swap with somebody who lives in a cold climate. But you know what, Bobby? It's kind of getting too late. Now it's it's going to be spring. Uh, 
Yes. He wants to go snowboarding. Yes. <laughs> Bali, I'm going skiing on Monday. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so you can get a flight to Seattle. I'll pick you up at the airport on in, on Sunday night and we can go skiing on Monday. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, let's go to the reading. Let's see. I put up I'm gonna put it up on the screen share and um I want you guys to open it in your own window. So you should be able to click on the um, the Google document and everybody should be able to see it. Okay, looks like everybody's there. So I just found this article. It's a brand new article, just came out two days ago, and it's in a magazine here in the United States called uh, United States called Yes Magazine. Uh, this magazine is often reporting on things um, like culture and um, politics and economy stuff like that but it usually has a positive spin so it usually um, is not just reporting but it's trying to um, talk about things that are going well in the world or interesting things but it's not like um, some magazines that talk about a lot of the bad stuff that's happening to people in the world it tries to have a positive um, view. So I think we have one new person, um, Peacemaker. <laughs> Peacemaker, are you there? Your microphone is probably muted. So if you want to read, you're going to have to make sure your microphone is on. So I'm going to come back to you. Okay, now I think it's on. Oh, great. Okay. So uh, what's your name? My name is Boris. I am I am coming from Turkey also. Oh, okay. Boris. Okay, great. And you like do you want me to call you by your name or by peacemaker? You can call me peace only. Peace. Okay. Yeah, I'll my, call you. my name is Peace in English. Okay. Great. Okay, so um I the way we do this uh is I highlight, I read, and when I'm reading that's to give you guys a chance to listen. So to see if you can listen and hear and understand what I'm saying. And then when it's your turn, you're going to read what I just read. So we're actually going to be reading every paragraph twice, once by me and then once by uh, people taking turns who are in the class. And if you have any questions at any time, you don't know what a word means, you're not really sure, just ask me and I will explain it um, so that we understand the article as we, we are reading it. So why Lent makes people happy and Netflix doesn't. So I guess the first thing, this is the title. We should make sure people know what Lent is. Who can tell me what Lent is? I know somebody knows. Anybody? Catholic? <laughs> it's a period of before the Easter, I think. Yep. Uh -huh. Period, yep, it's a period of time before Easter and it's actually, I have it here at the bottom, Lent this year began on Wednesday, February 13th, and it's going to be ending tomorrow. So it's a peri time period, I think 40 days, and usually if you're, um, I think it's mostly for Catholic people, maybe some Christians, but um, it's a time when you give up something. So you give up something for 40 days and then it ends on uh, tomorrow and then there's Easter celebration on Sunday. So I'm not going to necessarily go into the whole religious aspect of that. Some people may know it, some people may not. But it's an interesting article about what, it, um, what the effect is of this. So this is called Why Lent Makes People Happy. So that's meaning giving up stuff for 40 days. And Netflix doesn't. Netflix, I don't know if you guys know, it's a, it's a movie rental um, website in the United States, and they also do streaming lot in movies that you can get. So it's very popular for, for people who like to watch, watch movies. You can get DVDs sent to your house. Does anybody have Netflix in their country? Is it in Mexico or Colombia or yes. Turkey? Oh, okay, it yes. is? Okay. Yeah. All right, good. So you know what that is. 
So, why Lent makes people happy and Netflix doesn't. Many of us believe getting more of the things we value will make us happier. But new research suggests that cutting back on life's pleasures helps us enjoy them significantly more. Okay, Yada, why don't we start with you? Okay. Why Lent makes people happy and Netflix doesn't? Many of us believe getting more of the things we value will make us happier. But no research suggests that cutting back on life's pleasures helps us enjoy them significantly more. Mm -hmm. So there's a little phrasal verb in there. What is it? Does people, do people understand what it means cutting back on? What, what, what's another way that I could say that cutting back on? To reduce. Say it again. To reduce. Yes. Uh huh. To reduce. So when you cut back on something, you're you're reducing the time you spend. Or for example, a lot of times people when they're dieting, they say they cut back on sugar, maybe, or other types of food that they think is is making them gain weight. So that means they reduce how much they eat of that. So cutting back on life's pleasure. So basically, um, not doing so many of those types of things. All right. Like a lot of TV viewers these days, we binge watch our favorite shows on Netflix, consuming two, three, or more episodes, sometimes entire seasons at a time. Okay, Sinem? Um, just a second, please. Sure. Like a lot of TV viewers these days, we binge watch our favorite shows on Netflix, consuming two, three, or more episodes, sometimes entire seasons at a time. Okay, has anybody ever done that? Have you ever watched a whole season of a television show, like in one day or something? Yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> That's called binge watching. So it comes from the words oh, where people used to describe um, binge drinking where you would um, drink alcohol and you just keep drinking a lot until you get really drunk um, but this is binge watching uh, mm -hmm. Buddy, which one did you watch the whole season of? Do you remember? Uh, well, it's something like uh, when I know a, a new series and it catch me uh, something like I have to know what happened, what happened, what happened Yeah. then I get boring and uh, no more yeah yeah, yep. Mm. Yeah, I, I have never done that, but I, I see that my kids do that sometimes. Um, Sinan, why don't you finish and read this one too? Let me read it first. But little do we realize, bingers like us are cheating ourselves out of happiness. But little we do realize, bingers like us are cheating ourselves out of happiness. Okay, cheating ourselves out of. Do you guys know what that means? Cheating your if you cheat yourself, like, uh, like fake. It's something. Yeah. Kind of like um, not real, mm -hmm. not realistic, or we can say. Yeah. Yeah. It means like not real, or it means we're um, we're not getting the benefit that we think we are. We could be happy, but we're we're accepting less. We think this is making us happy, but it's not really. We're cheating ourselves from getting the real stuff that makes us happy. That's the lesson from new research in the field of positive psychology. What this research shows is that indulging in life's pleasures in smaller doses or even giving them up for stretches of time helps us enjoy them significantly more. Okay, peace. That's the lesson from new research in the field of positive psychology. What this research shows is that indulging in life's pleasures in smaller doses or even giving them up for such a long time helps us enjoy them significantly more. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, the word dose kind of comes from um, when you're taking medicine, for example, if you have a large dose of medicine, you mean you might have to take five pills, but if you have a smaller dose, maybe you just take one. So it's kind of like that. So instead of watching the whole season 
a smaller dose would be maybe you watch one episode every week or one episode every day instead of all of them at one time. And they're saying that the research shows that this will help us enjoy them even more. And it says, in one new study published by the journal so Social Psychological and Personality Science, researchers Jordi Koidbach and Elizabeth Dunn had 55 people eat a piece of chocolate and report how they felt. Then the researchers instructed some of those people to abstain from chocolate, so that means to not eat it, abstain from chocolate for a week, told others to eat as much chocolate as they wanted, and gave a third group no special instructions. Okay. Um, Pablo? Yes. Uh, in one new study uh, published in the journal Social, Social, Psychological and Personality Science, researchers Jordi mm, Koivac mm -hmm. and Elizabeth, yeah. Elizabeth Dunn mm -hmm. had 55 people eat a piece of chocolate and report how they felt. Then the researchers instructed some of those people to abstain from chocolate for a week. Told others to eat as much chocolate as they wanted. And gave a third group no special instructions. Okay, so we have three groups. What was the first group? What does this mean right here? I said it once. Do you guys know the word abstain? If you have to abstain from chocolate for a week, what does that mean? Even if you chocolate. Don't yeah, you can't eat it. So they told them you cannot eat chocolate for one week. So that's the I first group. <laughs> <laughs> and then they told others to eat as much chocolate as they wanted. So that's a second group. Who wants to be in that group? <laughs> Me. Yeah? Me. <laughs> Uh, as much as you want. And the third group, no special instructions. Okay, so we have three groups of people here that they're studying. What happened? Let's see. When all 55 people ate another piece, so they ate one first, and then they said, how do you feel? And then they gave them the instructions, and now they report back. When all 55 people ate another piece of chocolate at the end of the week, the people who had abstained from chocolate reported significantly greater happiness than either the bingers or the people left to their own devices. Okay, Nazro. When all 55 people ate another piece of chocolate at the end of the week, the people who had abstained from chocolate reported significantly great happiness than either the, the uh, bingers mm -hmm. or the people left to their own devices yes okay so the people who had abstained so those people who did not eat chocolate were happier after eating another piece of chocolate after a week in fact the bingers reported feeling less happy after their end of week chocolate than they felt after eating their piece at the start of the week while this is the first study to find that temporarily giving up something pleasurable may be good for our happiness, it builds on years of similar results. Okay, Osman? Yes. In fact, the beingness reported feeling less happy after they ran of the week chocolate than they would feel after at eating their piece at the start of the week. While this is the first study to find that tempor temporarily giving us something pleasurable may be good for our happiness. It pulls on years of similar results. Mm -hmm. So similar, it means um, the same kind same, of yes. results. Yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah. Okay, great. And temporarily, if you give up something for a little while, not forever, but for temporarily only, just for a little while. It says one study found one study found that whoop, take that off. One study found that people enjoyed 
an episode of the old sitcom Taxi more if it included commercials than if it did not. In another recent paper, people said they took greater enjoyment from positive experiences, sitting in a massage chair, listening to Japanese hip-hop, when those experiences were briefly interrupted. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, Mauro. Okay. When a study found that people enjoy episode of the old sitcom Taxi more if it includes commercials than if it did not. In another recent paper, people said they took greater enjoyment from positive experience sitting in a massive chair listening to Japanese hip hop when those experiences were briefly interrupted. Yeah. So what do you guys think about that? Do you like to watch shows that get interrupted by commercials? No. no. I know. Me neither. <laughs> but I wonder what they're saying is maybe because the commercial you're more eager to get back to the show and so you're like wanting to to see it. I don't know. I don't like commercials very much, so sometimes I don't want to even watch TV if it has a lot of commercials. Okay, well, let's keep reading. Let's see if we agree with these guys. <laughs> Their studies, anyways. As it turns out, people tend to get used to sources of joy and pleasure very quickly, soon taking them for granted. And when you have more of something pleasurable, it becomes easier to take it for granted and harder to savor it. The result is a psychic numbing to the good things in life. Okay. Hmm, Bobby. As it turns out, people tend to get used to source of joy and pleasures very quickly, soon taking them for granted. And when you have more of something pleasurable, it becomes easier to take it for granted and harder to savor it. The result is a psycho, uh, psychic dumbing dumb to the good things of, in life. Right. So here is what they're basically trying to tell us. We get too used to the good things in life. Badi, are, are you an example of that? <laughs> <laughs> You're so used to the hot and being right on the beach that you don't even care about it anymore. You want to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we could say, for example, that body takes the warm weather and the beach for granted, whereas other people might really want to be there right now because they're tired of the rain or they're tired of uh, the snow, something like that in their, in their town. But, so that's what they're saying is, a lot of times if you, uh, you have something, you take it for granted, and you don't realize how, uh, you don't know how to savor it. Savor it means to enjoy, enjoy it, okay? To take something for granted means you don't care about it. It's not that important to you. You don't realize how good you have it. And they're calling that a psychic numbing. When you're numb, it means you don't feel things. So they're, you're numb if you have only good stuff all the time. And it gets worse. Oh, great. Let's see. It gets worse. While that numbing effect may sound obvious, we're generally unaware of it in our own lives. Studies show that people mistakenly, so that's not true, mistakenly think that getting more of the things they value will make them happier. Okay. Amiko, you want to read? Yes, I hear. And it gets worse. While that numbing effect may sound obvious, we are generally unaware of it in our own lives. Studies show that people uh, mistakenly think that getting more of uh, the thing they value will make them happier. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we okay, tend to. Hold on, we're going to talk about that. Okay. So, while that numbing effect, so that effect of uh, having, taking things for granted, it says here that people usually think that if they get more of the things that made them happy, they'll be even happier. But that's not really true. 
So it's like the thing with the chocolate. If you love chocolate, you might think that being able to eat a lot of chocolate will make you even happier. But the reality is that it, it doesn't, is what they're saying in the studies. Just because you can eat more chocolate doesn't make you happier. Does anybody <coughs> have that experience in their life? Somebody want to say something? Nazro, did you want to say something? No. no. Okay. All no. right. At the same time, we tend to underestimate how consuming in moderation might boost our enjoyment and happiness in the long run. Participants in the taxi, massage chair, and Japanese hip-hop studies all thought the experience would be more enjoyable without interruptions. They were wrong. Okay, let's see. All right, who? Cause somebody came in new. Let me see who it was. No. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Wait. Oh, Hakan. Hakan, yeah. are you there? Yeah, yeah. I'm you want to read? Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. At the same time. At the same time, we tend to underestimate how cosmic in moderation might boost our enjoyment and happiness in the long run. Participants in the taxi message chair and Japan's hip hop studies all that the experience would be more enjoyable without interruptions. Uh, they were wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over a few words here. So it says we tend to underestimate. You guys know what that means? Underestimate? We usually, if you overestimate, like, for example, you think you're making a guess at something. So you're underestimating how consuming in moderation. You're, you're thinking um, that it's not really going to be that important. But actually, it is important. So that's underestimating something when you don't think it's as important as it really is. And consuming means using, using things in moderation. So not too much but also not too little, where you feel like you're deprived or you can't get what you want, but in moderation, just a balance. And some people think that that, um, uh, well, I guess they don't realize that that helps us. So that's what they're saying is actually people liked watching those things or getting those things done when there were interruptions. Does everybody know what an interruption is? Yeah. Um, for example, you are talking and somebody talks, then yep. it inter uh, that person interrupts you. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's an interruption. And also, the commercials kind of serve as interruptions. You're watching the show, and then all of a sudden it goes to a commercial. That's an interruption. So they're saying that people enjoyed what they were doing when there were little interruptions, just short ones, not long ones, but short, short ones. Okay, indeed, so much of our everyday behavior is driven by the misconception that more is better. We celebrate our most important holidays by cooking twice as much food as we need, then scarfing it down. We work hard to get a promotion, then, after getting it, start thinking about how to get the next one. We stay up all night tearing through House of Cards or the latest season of Mad Men. Okay, Yada? Indeed, so much of our everyday behavior is driven by the misconception that more is better. We celebrate our most important holidays by cooking twice as much food as we need, then scarfing it down. We mm -hmm. work hard to get a promotion. Then after, after getting, start thinking about how to get the next one. We stay up all night, feeling through House of Cards or the, le the last season of Mad Men. Yeah. <laughs> so our everyday behaviors, that means how we act every day, is driven by the misconception. So it's something that we think is true, but it's, it's not. And that is that more is better. So a lot of us think that the more we have of something good, the better it will be or the happier we will be. And, and then he gives examples. So, for example, at a holiday, like Christmas maybe or, you know, something like that, 
We cook twice as much food as we need, so we think it's better to cook more food. And then we scarf it down. That means we eat it. But when you're scarfing it, it's like you eat it very quickly and you're just stuffing it in your mouth instead of just sitting there and enjoying it. Uh, and then once we get a promotion, like in our job, then we are happy, but then we want to, then we start thinking about the next thing. So we always want more and more and more, thinking that it's going to make us happier. What's more, this same misconception about happiness leads many people to covet wealth and material things. Research suggests that more money can bring us more happiness, but only until we earn up to about $75,000 per year. Okay, peace. Last month, the same misconception about happiness leads many people to COVID wealth and material things. Research suggests that more money can bring us more happiness, but only until we earn up to about $75,000 per year. Yeah. So I wonder if that's true. Do you guys think that that would be true? That even um, if you had more money than $75,000 per year, you wouldn't be any more happy? What if you had a million dollars? Would you be happier? Yeah. For you, it's the right way. Perhaps I would, yes. Yes. <laughs> Maybe happier than today. <laughs> be happier to do this today. Yes. Bobby, how much money do you think you would need to be happy? Mm, enough money for moving to a cold place. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is some snow to be happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Osman, do you ever think about how much money would you'd be happier with? How much would you like to have? Uh, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever for, think about for, that? For me, enough. <laughs> yeah, that would be enough for you. Okay. How about yes. you, Yada? Oh, maybe that could be make makes me happy because I I come about my BMW. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but do you need three BMWs or will one be enough? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> <laughs> Just one BMW would be enough. Okay. What What is something that you would buy, Akan, if you had more money? Something that you would think would be make you happy that you could buy? An island. An island. Wow. Okay. Where? Uh, Central America, maybe. Okay. Cool. Just and travel the world. Yeah. Nazra, what did you say? What would you like to do? Travel the world. Travel the world. Okay, that's great. Maro, if you if you have some ideas of how you could spend some money, you got some more money. <laughs> yes, I said the island. Oh, you're gonna. You said the island. I thought yeah. Hakan said the island. Hakan, what? No, no. But travel around the world is a good idea, also. Yeah, that's also a good idea. Okay. Uh, Amico, what would you do if you had more money to just spend? Mm, I will buy a big house in the Maldives island. Okay, nice. And um, Fairuz, you joined us. Are you there, Fairuz? Yes, I'm here. Hi there. Um, hi. Have you been following the article at all? Yes. Okay, I cool. So uh, what would you do with some extra money? That would be fun. Okay, if I would have much money, I would just splash it out. Uh, on you would spend it. I would yes, I would spend it on uh, the m the most expensive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you wanted to buy. Whatever I want, even I I buy a, a shop or uh huh store. Uh -huh. store. Okay, great. Osman, how about you? Okay. I am fine. <laughs> oh yeah, you're good. Okay, peace. How about you? Peace. I would like I would like to give that money to someone else. <laughs> needs to me. it more needs it more than you? <laughs> yeah, I, I think giving it 
happier than receiving. Uh huh. So, for you, giving it makes you happier than receiving or yeah. having. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's keep see, listening to this article. See what what they say. These researchers, psychologists. So it says after that. So after this seventy five thousand dollars a year. After that, there seems to be a negligible, so that means like a not really um, very important, it's very little, negligible increase in happiness from making more money, meaning that many of us waste a lot of time pursuing a happiness we'll never reach. Or worse, our single-minded pursuit of wealth stretches us out, compromises our values, and strains our relationships without bringing that elusive boost in happiness. Okay, who's next? Peace? It was me who read it at last. Do you already read before? Yeah. Okay, Osman? Af after that, there seems to be a neg negligible increase in happiness from ma making more money. Meaning that, meaning that, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, and meaning that many of you waste waste a lot of time producing a happiness we we will we will never reach, or worse, our single-minded pursuit pursuit of wealth stress us out. Com com compromise our values and strengths or relationships without bringing that elusive both in happiness. Yep. So pretty much we spend a lot of time pursuing. You guys know what that means? Pursuing. Yes, following. Following, yes, or going, going after. So following or going after trying to get happiness. But a lot of times it doesn't really work. We get there stressed. There is a movie. We get, yeah, that's right. What's the name of that movie? Uh, Pursuing of, happiness, of yeah, happiness. Pursuit of, of happiness. Pursuit of happiness. Did you watch that movie? Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So we get stressed out. Sometimes we have to compromise our values. So maybe that means we have to do things that we don't really believe in, but we do it because we think that it will make money for us. And sometimes it's not very good for our relationships. It puts strains, which means um, um, hardships. It's hard on our relationships. And it doesn't even get us that elusive, so something that's kind of uh, hard to find. That's what elusive is. Uh, the boost. We don't get that boost, so that increase in happiness. All of this research points to a paradox. So that means it's kind of like the opposite of what you think. All of this research points to a paradox of happiness. It's not tied to abundance, but to recognizing and appreciating what we do have. Once we meet our basic needs, our lives become more satisfying if we can savor and be grateful for the good that's already around us before we strive for more. Okay, Nazro. Okay. All of this re uh, research points to a paradox of happiness. It's not tied to abundance, but to recognize and appreciate in what we have what we have. Once we meet our basic needs, our lives become more satisfying if we can savor and be grateful for the good that's already around us before we strive for more. Okay. So they're telling us that it's not, our happiness isn't tied to having a lot of things. But what we do need to do is recognize, so notice what we do have, and appreciate or be thankful, be grateful for what we do have. It says here, once we meet our basic needs, who can tell me what our basic needs are when we talk about that? What kinds of things are our basic needs? Food, food. clothes, food. Uh -huh, food, clothing. Uh, water, uh huh. Usually it's housing. Also, they have a place to live. You might mm -hmm. need a uh, heat or or cooling in that house, perhaps. So those are pretty much the basic things that anybody needs to live. 
And once we have those things, then we can uh, be grateful and savor them. So really enjoy them before we start looking for more. Striving, that's another word for pursuing. Striving. Uh, this can be easier said than done. But coincidentally, so coincidentally means like happens at the same time. Um, it's a coincidence. Millions of Americans have been getting a jump start on moderation over the past month with their observance of Lent. Okay, Mauro. Do you see it? Mauro, do you want to read that? Okay. Uh, this can be easier said than done, but coincidentally, millions of Americans have been getting a jump start on moderation over the past month with their observance of land. Mm -hmm. For Christians, this is supposed to be a period of repentance and self-denial, of course. A time to give up meat, chocolate, sex, and other indulgences as a way to atone for sins. But Koidbach and Dunn's research suggests it may carry some other benefits. Temporarily denying themselves certain pleasures for 40 days may ultimately make people happier people happier than consistently indulging in them. In other words, a religious ritual of renunciation might actually feel pretty good in the end. Okay. Who is next here? Hakan? You're, if you're reading, we can't hear you. Maybe your microphone is muted, Hakan. There you go. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for Christians, it's supposed to be a period of repentance and self denial of course, a time to give up new chocolate, sex, and other indulgence as a way to atone for sin. But uh, faith and God's research suggests it may carry some other benefits. Temporarily dealing themselves certain pleasures for 40 days may ultimately make people happier than consistently indulging in them. <laughs> Hold on there. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Uh, in other words, a religion's ritual of uh, renunciation might mm -hmm. actually feel pretty good in the end. Right. So that's basically what they found. So for Lent, for the period of 40 days, sometimes people, uh, they deny themselves. So that's what that means, self-denial. They give up stuff. And it's supposed to be as repentance. So that's like asking forgiveness for your sins kind of thing. That's the religious part of it. But they give up things like meat, chocolate, sex, and other things that they usually are beyond their basic needs. So they don't give up water or they don't give up sleeping or something like that, but other things beyond their basic needs. And they suggest here that maybe that's a good thing because people might feel good in the end. They might feel pretty good once they've done it for 40 days and then they get to go back to doing it. So the last uh, paragraph says, at a time when science and religion are often seen as at odds with one another. It's encouraging to see them both validate a basic counterintuitive message. Sometimes we get a lot from giving stuff up. Okay, Ben, do you want to read that last paragraph? You just joined us. And I muted your microphone, so yeah, unmute it. There you go. Okay. At a time when science and religion are often seen as at odds with one another, it's encouraging to see them both validate a basic counter intuitive message. Sometimes we get a lot of forgiving stuff up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the counterintuitive there means, I'm writing in the chat, it's not what you would think. So we think by intuition sometimes 
we think that we wouldn't like to give up stuff and that would be better we would be happier if we had more of what we like but I guess they're telling us that the research shows that that's not necessarily true I'm asking I'm wondering what you guys think now we have about uh, five six minutes left in the class and we can talk about this article and I want to know what you guys think uh, about this have you ever given something up for Lent or for 40 days or for a little bit of time even Hi, Ben, why don't you tell us where you're from also first since you missed the introductions? Uh, sorry, but I don't get what you mean by where? give stuff up. Oh, okay. When we were talking in the article, um, when you give something up, so for 40 days for Lent, for example, people stop doing something that they like. So they might be giving up chocolate. That means they stop eating chocolate. Have you ever stopped doing something that you like for a time period, maybe a couple of days or a week or something like that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I stop off and enter to my Facebook account. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to. Because yeah? It, yeah. Okay. It was like three days or four days because I have to do an exam, uh -huh. a really important exam to avoid. Yeah. And how did that work for you? How was that for you? Yeah, it was really good because I get I I got a good grade. Uh -huh. my test. Yeah, good. And um, Ben, where are you from? I'm from Peru. Peru. Okay, great. Yada, have you ever given anything up like that for Lent or just um, for another reason, maybe? Um, well, not exactly. I think this is related with uh, religions. But in my country or in my religion, this uh -huh. is a important period. Yes. But depends of each person. And yeah. maybe we um, quit uh -huh. for some things that was important for me. Yeah. I think I can stop to eat chocolate because I love it. <laughs> but if <laughs> it's necessary, I do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's um I think it's related about things that help uh, myself with my spirituality or something like that. Yeah. This kind of periods, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think it's a good thing to do? Yes. Yeah. When we, when uh, you think that you need to do that, it's mm -hmm. a good that yeah. you try to do. Right. And peace. What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea to give something up now and then, and um, and see if you like it better, or you appreciate it more later? Have you had mm. that experience? I was smoking before. So uh, I gave up forever, I think. I hope. Uh, smoking? Yes, yeah, smoking. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, now I am much more happier and healthier. Uh huh. Yeah. So some, they're saying that sometimes you want to give up some things just for a little while and then you feel better, but some things you want to give up forever. And so smoking might be, be a good thing to not do again if you're feeling mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Yes. Os Osman, uh, what about you? Have you ever um, stopped doing something for a little while that you like and then started doing it again, maybe? Uh, I don't understand uh, you. Okay. Um, did you understand the article? Yeah. Okay. Have you had that experience, giving something up, stopping doing something for a little while? Like... Some people the in the in the um, in the study they stopped one of the groups stopped eating chocolate for one week and then when they ate chocolate again they they were much happier they felt better. Have you done that before? Yes, I think it's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, like that uh, things. Uh -huh. uh, all of people, uh, it's uh, 
it uh, will be uh, happy. Yeah. Okay. Mauro, do you agree with the article that that's a good idea? I think I agree with the, the main idea of the article. For mm -hmm. instance, I used to eat a lot of meat. Yes. Maybe, I don't know, five or six days per week. Mm -hmm. And now I decided to eat maybe two times, twice a week. Yes. And I realized that I enjoy more now eating meat than before. Oh, so uh-huh. I think it's a good idea. There you go. That's an example. Good example. Okay, great. Hakan, do you have an example? Do you agree with the article or not? I'm, I'm agree. Um, it's the same um, piece I used for smoking before. Uh-huh, smoking, yeah. Yeah, but, but now I'm not. Okay, great. Well, hi, Ricardo. I see you just joined us and also Nairi. But we're just, we're, hi Hello. Ricardo, hi there, how are you doing? You? Good, yes. thank, you. thank you. We're just finishing up the class, so yeah. we're going to be saying uh, goodbye for now. I think I have another class later if anybody wants to do some writing. If you're uh, still mm -hmm. awake, we're going to be doing it at 9 o'clock. That's in five more hours. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, uh -huh. it's going to be a writing class. So we get you get to write stuff and type it, and I make corrections and help you with things. So, okay. well, thank you everybody for reading. That was not an easy article. So if you could understand that article and you did pretty well, then that's a probably more advanced level of English. So uh, that you should congratulate yourselves. You guys did a really good job, and it sounds like you understood um, what the main points of the article were. So um, thank you for coming to class, and I'll see you at another time. Have a good day. Have a okay. good day. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, see you guys.